There's a really difficult job that I'm so glad that I'm not doing. And that difficult job is actually writing real exam papers because this is a really challenging thing to do because you've got to come up with new questions that students haven't seen before while giving everybody a chance to show what they know about the subject. Now, there are only so many things that could be asked in A-level physics because there's quite a tight specification and the exam papers have to be used by students of all abilities. So not just the people who are kind of aiming for Oxford, they're getting golds in like the Olympiad, they're aiming for the A-star. We've also got normal people who are kind of getting grades from E upwards. And don't forget that somebody getting an E grade in A-level physics is still passing quite a demanding course. So the exam paper has to cater for everybody. And if completely new novel questions were only ever asked, then it wouldn't help normal people, kind of like you and me, to get the marks they need to get the grades they need to get to university and so on. So the challenge is, what do the people who write exams actually do? Well, going through lots and lots of past papers, I've really noticed that the more past papers you do, the more common questions come up again and again and again. Because even for people at the lower end of the grade boundaries, there still have to be lots of easy questions that are fairly standard. So for example, I've seen so many questions asking students to define resonance of a system. I've seen questions about looking at how you time something which is oscillating and how to take at least 10 readings and where to take the readings from. Now here are some examples I've seen recently. I've been doing lots and lots of worked examples and you can find all of these over at A-Level Physics Online. But this question here, the first one, um, is about the diameter of a wire which is measured in five different places along its length. And so we've got a load of data and then the first question is about the absolute uncertainty. So the absolute uncertainty is going to be equal to half the range which in this case was 0 0.03. So that question was about measuring the diameter of a wire. Now the very next year the same exam board asked this question over here and they had a question about the diameter of a wire and they had five bits of data. So again, this question is about how you actually measure that. This comes up quite a lot. I've got a video about it that I did a couple of weeks ago. And this might be if you're looking at resistivity, if you're looking at young modulus, you need to know how wide something is. Here they've got um, a question about how they could make those measurements. So maybe use vernier calipers, and then you do this reading at different orientations to make sure it's circular and cross-section along the length of the wire. And then of course there's a question um, about how um, they actually worked out the diameter, which is just the mean value, and then why is this the um, absolute uncertainty? Because it's half the range. So that question was asked in 2022, and a very, very similar one was asked in 2023. That means, of course, that if you're doing questions from 23, from 2024, those questions could potentially come up in a very slight variation in this year's paper in 2025, and obviously um, papers into the future. I then looked at this question from a different exam board. Uh, this one says, um, uh, the student measured the diameter of the wire using a micrometer. Explain one technique the student should use when measuring D. So take the reading in at, three, at least three different orientations along the wire to calculate the mean. Uh, and that's because the wire might not be uniform. And this ensures it's got a circular cross-sectional area. So we can use the equation pi d squared over four for the area. That question from Edexcel, pretty much the same question as that one from OCR. And of course, I suspect at some point, AQA, EDUCAS, all the other exam boards will have asked similar questions. Now, you cannot predict exactly what's gonna come up on future exams, but the more past papers you do, the higher the chance that some of those questions will be repeated in some form. And that means when you go into the exam and you see a question that's very similar to what you've done before, you can have this lovely, warm, fuzzy feeling that you know you're going to get the marks because you know you can get it correct and you know what the marking points are awarded for. And ultimately, that just comes from doing lots more past papers. If you want to find more past papers, especially for A-level physics, head over to alevelphysicsonline.com. You can find lots and lots of work solutions and also videos where I go through my working and my approach to those questions.